Welcome back everybody. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Uh, today I thought we'd make a quick video on some of the hacks that you can use Serosafe for. Uh, Serosafe is an alloy that Brownell sells and it's really good for doing things like chamber casts. Uh, this right here is a chamber cast that I've already taken with Serosafe. And uh, the reason that I think we're going to need Serosafe, uh, I'll be honest, I'm, I'm kind of blindly going into this project. I've got a 6CZ75 here uh, that uh, the rounds are not going all the way into battery. Uh, this is actually my stepson's gun. He brought it over to me and what was happening, these are dummies obviously. I'm going to load a couple of dummies in the magazine. What's happening is the rounds are not going all the way in the battery when the slide closes and the slide is, is left cheated back a little bit. So there's a couple of things that could happen there but I think there's a chamber obstruction and we are going to have a quick look and again these are dummies guys. I'm not going to put live ammo in the gun right here in the shop. I'm going to disassemble this gun and we're going to have a look at the barrel. I've got a Lyman bore scope right over here and I know it's difficult to see. I'm going to take a couple of uh, kind of snapshots for you. This bore scope has a camera in the end of it with a light. There's a little screen over here to my right and uh, it, it's not like super good quality but it's definitely good enough to diagnose uh, what could be going on with this barrel. Uh, some of the ammo that we were shooting at the range the other day was some Argentine contract uh, old school NATO ball from like the early 80s. So I, I can't really say what type of uh, storage conditions that particular ammunition was subjected to. Uh, I don't know. But I imagine that we probably ended up getting some obstruction in the chamber. And right there at the end of the chamber with the bore scope, you can definitely see a little ring of crud in the end of the chamber and that can be very difficult to get out with normal cleaning measures okay now this bore scope is very handy for you know seeing what exactly is causing that problem in this gun it's not the gun's fault it was the ammo's fault so this was an ammunition fail failure uh, that caused the gun to fail so Serosafe has a really low melting point you can melt it with a hair dryer literally is just nothing to it I've got a little propane torch here a spoon couple of patches. You really don't need a whole lot, just your normal cleaning stuff. We're going to move over here to the vise and we're going to show you how to melt down the Serosafe. And what we're going to do is we're going to pour Serosafe into the chamber of this pistol barrel in order to hopefully extract uh, that little anomaly in the chamber and get the gun back in working order. Serosafe is an excellent thing to have laying around. This is a really quick five minute, you know, fix uh, for a chamber obstruction. So removing stuck cases, removing uh, something out of a chamber in terms of a, a little obstruction or something. Uh, also doing a chamber cast. This is a chamber cast from a 43 Spanish rifle. Uh, I picked up a Remington rolling block and I, I wasn't sure of the caliber. So you can use Serosafe to do a chamber cast. Uh, you can also do um, basically a casting of the initial lead of the rifle to know how much free bore you have and to know what your bore diameter is. If uh, Serosafe is used properly, it will provide some pretty respectable dimensions for you to measure to know exactly what type of firearm you're dealing with. And the nice thing about it, like in this case, you can reuse it over and over again. Let's go over to the vise, and I think we can fix this little barrel up in two seconds. Let's do it. All right, I think we're going to be able to get this little pistol barrel fixed right up. Uh, basically, what you want to do in this case, uh, whether you're doing a chamber casting or whether you're trying to remove an obstruction, uh, you want to go ahead and plug the barrel. Basically, just take you a cleaning patch or something and you want to kind of you can probably see that in there. I basically just took the liberty of, of going ahead and installing a cleaning patch in there. Shove it up uh, into the lead past the chamber a good bit and uh, that's going to basically cause a, a stop for our, our alloy. We don't need to you know cast the whole barrel. We're just casting a small portion here. And then uh, what you want to do just like any other mold you want to preheat the workpiece. So since we're trying to mold this chamber and grab uh, that brass ring and get it out of there we want the, the barrel to be relatively warm. It doesn't have to be scalding hot. I mean, it, you really don't have to get this stuff overly hot. So what we're going to do is I've just got a spoon here. I know this might be difficult to see, but I should be able to get just some gentle heat going with the propane torch. You can really use anything you want, um, but I'm going to kind of... You notice I'm heating this in a spoon. You don't really want to heat the alloy directly, okay? I'm just going to heat the bottom of this spoon. And you'll see this stuff melts pretty quick. And again, I'm kind of working at a strange angle here, but just bear with me. This literally, guys, is a, is a five minute job. Once you, once you get it figured out and you know what, what to do, 
it really is not a big deal at all. This is a very, very easy job. Most gunsmiths are going to charge you probably 50 bucks to do this. If you got some Sierra Safe alloy laying around, you can do this on your own, save yourself some money. Okay? This alloy is not very expensive from Brownell, so it's really not a big deal to have a block of this stuff laying around for emergencies. Nice thing about this stuff too is you can use it in the field. So if you're at a three gun match and you get a jam up or something or a stuck case, you can save the day with this stuff. All right, I'm just gonna heat the barrel a little bit. Whoa, it's fine. I'm gonna burn the tape off, I make more of it. And again, guys, we don't have to get this, this thing very hot because this, uh, this Sarah safe is gonna be just fine. But we wanna make sure that that barrel's warm so it flows real nice. All right, we're gonna just give this spoon a preliminary heat here. I think this is gonna do the trick. I'm gonna show you another little trick in a second here. All right, we're just gonna, you can use a funnel if you want, but uh, you don't really have to. I'm just gonna kinda dribble a little bit in there. Just like that, okay? I'm gonna set this spoon over here to the side. Now something else we're gonna do Get that out of the way there. I mean, you see, I'll just grab, you wouldn't do that with lead. You know what I mean? You would not just grab that lead, but I, you want to save all the Sierra safe because this stuff is, uh, you know, definitely handy to have around. So while we've got it in there, we're going to go ahead and heat the barrel some more and the barrel will warm the Sierra safe before it cures up too much and that'll help it mold to the barrel as well. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to turn this real low so I don't burn my house down. Right there. Just a gentle flame, maybe more than that. All right. We're basically casting the chamber. That's exactly what we're doing here. And this is the same process that you would use even if you were to have a, a, a barrel of unknown caliber and you needed to determine the caliber of the barrel. You can see that that Cero safe is kind of folding in and dropping in there a little bit more. And that's because I'm heating this metal up and it's really finding its home there and it's going right in place and that's exactly what we want. We want it to grab that, that brass ring and get it on out of there. So I think we're good to go here. This is really overkill, but I'm just trying to demonstrate. We're gonna let this cure up and then let's uh, knock that ring out of there and get this pistol back in action. All right, the Sierra safe is settled up in the chamber just fine. Uh, now the hard part's gonna be getting this plug out of here and hopefully it's gonna have a little ring of brass stuck in there and we'll have our, our problem fixed here. I took a piece of wood and just uh, pinched it in the salt in the jaws here just to get it uh, a little bit of a sacrificial area to, to beat on a little bit here. I'm going to take a transfer punch I found here that fits the barrel almost uh, perfectly and I'm going to try my best to not damage this barrel and we're just going to give it a little whack and see if our uh, Sarah safe will come out. There it is. All right, so the wood uh, offered kind of a sacrificial medium there so we didn't damage our barrel. So the wood can take a ding, but the Sarah safe doesn't. And we're going to pull the Sarah safe out. Oh, and what do you have there? You got a little ring, and our problem is fixed. Uh, but don't take my word for it. We're going to go ahead and um, inspect the barrel again, and I'll load it up, and we'll take it out here and shoot it and make sure it works. There you go. Sarah safe in a nutshell right there. All right, we're gonna try some 124 grain Aguila ball ammunition just to see if we got our little problem sorted out. One thing on this gun yet that I haven't done that I need to do, we're gonna replace the springs on this particular gun. Hopefully she's working right or else I'm gonna look like a real fool. Let's give it a try. Very cool. I think I rode the uh, slide stop up on that last round. That's okay. But the gun's working right. We got her fixed up. That's all it was. Guys, keep your chambers clean, especially if it's a gun for life and liberty. You want to make sure that uh, you're always using the right magazines too. 
uh, you know, this could be a magazine an anomaly that calls that one last uh, round to not really go in there. We definitely got to get that worked out though. And a carry gun, always make sure that you're checking everything. Shoot your carry gun, take it out and shoot it. Make sure your chamber's clean. Make sure your magazines are clean. Make sure you check your magazines all the time. Take your carry gun out and shoot it because you do not want to pull the thing out of the holster and have an issue. It was three rounds into a magazine that he had that issue uh, with that particular ammo. And if he was relying on that gun and that ammo to save his life, we would have had an issue. So always maintain your weapons properly and they'll take care of you. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.